the topic of having a backup may be a boring subject, but I think it's one that needs to be covered. I help moderate on the Avid Audio forums on the Duck, and I can't tell you how many times I've been scanning through that form and someone has been saying, you know, I need a different version of Pro Tools. Well, of course, we can always go into our Avid account and download a version of Pro Tools, even sometimes an older version. But in the Avid account, not every single version of Pro Tools is available. You know, not every single dot release is available. And maybe that's a version that we need. Uh, the same thing holds true for plugins. I mean, look at all these plugins I have backed up here. I may not always be able to access the version that I want. Or if I were to happen to have some sort of internet failure and my studio needs to reinstall a plugin, maybe I had a Windows crash on me and I had to reinstall it fresh or whatever the case may be. And for some reason, I'm not able to download the version I want or any version. If you have a backup, you're always covered. So in this video, we're just going to go over the topic of backing up and just give you a couple ideas of things you can do to not only back up your DAWs, your NLEs, but also all of your plugins and serial numbers. Now, if we look in here, you can see I have a lot of program. And this, of course, applies to more than just plugins, more than just uh, you know DAWs. It applies really to any sort of program that you have that needs a, a serial number or something like that. So let's hop over here to control panel, go in here to programs and features. And you can see I have a lot of programs, a lot of plugins, a lot of DAWs installed. And what I like to do is make sure I, I have access to the installers for every single plugin, every single DAW, and I have access to every single serial number. Now, things like say native instruments, you buy it uh, boxed, you're going to have a serial number written on a card. That's all well and good, but what if you lose that card and what if you happen to need that serial number? Of course, we can go to nativeinstruments.com, log in and get our serial number there, but what if we can't access that for whatever reason? If we have it backed up, we have that serial number backed up and we have the installer backed up, we're always able to get exactly what we need. Let's just look at the serial numbers. So we went to the documents folder. This is an okay place to store your serial numbers. Now, I wouldn't do this. I like to store all of my serial numbers on a non-OS hard drive, just in case I happen to reinstall Windows or something and that blows all my documents away. Of course, this is going to be a little bit different if you're on Mac, but whatever the documents would be for your Mac, it's still a good idea to keep all of this stuff like serial numbers uh, on a different hard drive. So. I like to keep that over in my save documents folder. So just again, as, as an idea, here's air music technology. So as you can see in here, I have a bunch of different text files. I just use notepad documents, but of course you could use a rich document format. You could use an Excel format, whatever you like to do. And uh, as you can see, I like, let me just open this up. So as you can see, I have my serial number, which I blurred out. And I also have where I downloaded it from. Okay. Which of course I'm going to blur out, but this is just an idea of keeping a text file of your authorization numbers, just in case you need them. Now, you know, expand to, uh, I'm able to authorize that with uh, the iLock license manager, but who knows, I may need this number in the future. So I always have it written down. I, it, it's also in my email, but don't depend on just having it backed up in one place, like an email, always create a text document for every plugin you have. As you can see, I have several folders here. So if I go into the Avid folder, I'll have a bunch of text documents here of uh, uh, different serial numbers that I might need. Uh, of course, I'm not accessing these every day or be, sometimes not even every year, but who knows when I'm going to need you know, these uh, authorizations or, or these serial numbers again. So that's just an idea of creating text documents. Now you may not want to create several folders. I like to have everything in different folders just so I'm always able to find and drill down into exactly what I need. One thing you may want to do is say just uh, create a new text document, maybe a Word document or whatever, and just have one document. I'll just use a text document just to demonstrate this. So I may want to say, I may want to have IK Multimedia and then Isotope and then say Native Instruments, etc. And then within there, I'd have say uh, Sample Tank 3 and then Isotope say Ozone seven and you get the idea you just put in all of the plugins that you own and then underneath that you would type in you know your serial number or of course copy and paste it in and then you could have one document that has all of your serial numbers access codes license codes whatever all within one document that's something you can do as well we're not going to say that what i like to do as i you know as i've shown i like to have different folders and if i just say open one up of course i have to blur all this out but all my serials are written down right here. Can I access this in my F expansion account? Of course, but maybe for some reason I'm not able to access it at that time. Well, I always have what I need right here. Okay. So 
The point of this is always back up every single serial number that you have. Okay, create a text document, either create one text document or create several folders and different text documents. So you always have all of your serial numbers written down. Don't trust just having a backup in your email account. Don't trust just having it written on a card somewhere. I mean, I don't know how many times on YouTube people have said, I lost my access code. It's written on a card. I lost the card. I moved or whatever. Don't trust cards. Always have a file based backup. And whenever you have that file based backup, use a cloud account and store a copy of, say, your serial numbers into something like OneDrive or, or Google Drive or whatever the case may be. Always have a backup in at least two places, okay? Once again, have a backup of every single serial number that you have. Trust me, it's going to come in handy, whether you're just a home studio, whether, whether you just do this for a hobby or even if you're doing it professionally. And of course, the same thing holds true for uh, you know our video effects. So new blue effects, click on that. All of my serial numbers are written down, okay? This comes in very handy, very, very handy. Now, what about backing up installers? This is very important. Now, again, I do not like to save everything on my system drive, on my C drive. Uh, you don't have to have as many hard drives as, as I do, but purchase a external drive or another an internal drive. External would be great for backups. That way you can move it between computers and, and store your, your serial numbers on that hard drive and also store your backups on that external hard drive or internal hard drive. I'm, I happen to be using an external uh, right here. So we'll just go in here. And for me, I just put everything that is related to audio and video into Avid Backup. Now, of course, Avid doesn't make Bitwig, you know, Avid doesn't make all of the third party plugins. But when I think Avid, I think creation. So I think music or video. So that's that's how I categorize things. So we go to Media Composer. You can see, of course, I can access Media Composer in my Avid account, but I can't access every single version, not all the time. So that's why I have multiple backups. This is very important. Again, I moderate on the Avid audio forums. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen people requesting a version of Media Composer or, or a version of Pro Tools that is no longer in their Avid account they could you know get rid of all that stress if you just always have at least two backups of older versions and the current version so two to three backups of an old version and a current version so currently we're on 8.6 i have my backup right here but i also have other backups going all the way down to 8.3.1 makes sense okay so whenever you download a plugin a daw it's probably going to be here in your downloads folder after you unzip that folder go ahead and install it once you have everything installed, you can delete the unzipped folder and then just drag the zipped folder into your backup location. You know, whatever you want to name, the folder is fine. You know, you don't have to follow Avid backup, which, of course, if you if you only have, say, FL Studio or, or Reason or something, you naming it Avid wouldn't make sense, of course. OK, but just drag that zipped folder into a backup location and keep it. Just keep it. Trust me, it will come in handy eventually. It's OK, same thing for plugins. So all my Media Composer plugins are right here. I also have license files. Uh, right here for my serial numbers in case I ever need them. Everything is backed up and categorized. Again, a boring subject. I realize this is boring, but it will save your butt when you least expect you're going to need it. Something will happen and all of a sudden you say, wow, I wish I had an easy way to access that backed up, say, Titler Pro. Well, here we go. I don't have to re-download it. I have a backup right here. Uh, I have serial numbers right here in this file. Okay, same thing for Pro Tools. Go here to Pro Tools now. I have a bunch of backups of Pro Tools. Again, how many times have we seen on the Avid form people requesting an older version of Pro Tools? Because not every version of Pro Tools is in our Avid account. If you have it backed up, you don't have to ask for a download because you have it. You prepared. You have you have a backup plan. Again, this is a very basic concept, but something that I feel needs to be vocalized because I see it so often of people not being able to find the downloads that they need. So here I have several versions of Pro Tools. Same thing for drivers. I have backups of my all of my 11 rack drivers and of course all of the plugins. Now I put everything in the Avid Backup Pro Tools and then plugins. Uh, you know, you can categorize this however you want. Maybe you just want to have a plugins folder because again, Avid doesn't make all of these. Okay, plugins. I also put things like Bitwig backups in here. Uh, anything relating to, relating to music I put within one, one area. Again, this, these are just simple concepts and ideas. OK, but you need to have a backup. So let's go in here to the Avid backup. And you see every single plugin that we looked at earlier when we were over in control panel and we went to programs and features, every single thing that I have installed. OK, as soon as I download it and install it, 
I will move a backup into my backup location. This is a workflow you need to get into the habit of. Download it, unzip it, install it, and then take that zipped folder and drag it into your backup location. Then you can delete everything off of your C drive and you'll, you know, you'll save your space on your C drive, but have that backup somewhere. So I have a backup for everything. Now this takes a while to set up. Obviously it takes a while. You may have to set aside three, four, five, six hours, depending on how many, uh, you know, plugins, things like that, that, that you have, it's going to be totally worth it. Especially if you reinstall your operating system, whether that's uh, OS 10 or, you know, or, or windows, having all of these things already downloaded comes in handy. Uh, you know, I can't even tell you how often this has saved my butt, uh, especially for large things like libraries. Now I keep my libraries, sound libraries installed on, on a, on a different location, but I also have backups of every sound library, either on a DVD or on a hard drive somewhere, because as you know, like things like say sample tank, you know, it has a large library or, or anything from native instruments has a large library. So now I have the native instrument stuff on a disc, but, uh, on DVDs, but things like F expansion, uh, BFD three, I have all of those uh, libraries backed up to a sample library backup folder. So F expansion, you see every uh, BFD expansion that I own and the core library I have backed up. So if I ever need to reinstall them, I don't have to go through the trouble of downloading 40, 50, 60, 70 gigs of sound. Okay. So this is having a backup of all of your uh, sample libraries as well. Uh, another thing you will want to back up, uh, let's go to say Nomad Factory. So here's Nomad Factory and the way they authorize things is they use license files. So I have my license files backed up as well, the authorization files. So if I'm not able to access them through my Nomad Factory account, I can't find my serial number, which we can find our serial number because now we've started to back them up. But whatever the case may be, we have our auth file, which let's go here to documents. And uh, in our case, Nomad Factory has the licenses in our documents folder. So right here, okay, that's what authorizes our plugin whenever we open them. Take all these files, throw them into a backup folder, have everything backed up. I hope this gets through because having your authorization files backed up very important. It's the same thing for things like uh, Steven Slate. So I have a backup of my SSD uh, authorization file. Make sure you have a backup. You're only able, to, I believe you're only able to download that file a few times. So back it up. A very simple concept, but something that I see is not uh, being performed by a lot of people and they're running into trouble, they're running into problems, uh, they're running into issues that could easily be solved and, and never be an issue in the first place if you've just taken the time to back it up. So I just wanted to vocalize that idea. I wanted to, to give you some ideas on how to back it up, how to structure things, back it up, back it up, back it up. If it does not exist in at least three places, then it does not exist at all. Remember that always back up every plugin, every NLE, you know, every version of Pro Tools that you think you may need always have at least a couple. Okay, older version of Pro Tools. Now I have several versions. I probably don't need, say, 12.5.0. I have, you know, 12.5.1 here. But always have a backup and keep that backup at least for a couple months after after you install the current version. So we're on 12.5.2. I don't really need 12.5.0. I'm going to delete it because I still have 12.5.1 and 12.5.2. All right, does that make sense? So go do it right now. Go ahead and create your backup strategy. Implement it and follow that workflow. Every time you install a new plugin, a new DAW, a new version of your DAW, throw a backup of that into your backup location and also copy down any serial numbers, any access codes, anything, even if they're authorized by iLock. Back up every single number. It will come in handy. So go do it right now. Trust me, it's gonna save your butt eventually. This stuff always comes around and having a backup is the best way to make sure your studio is up and running and worry-free.